Hi everyone, I am Shapnil Banerjee and today in this video we shall talk about the diagnostic algorithm for pulmonary tuberculosis in adults. So we have a number of tests for the diagnosis of tuberculosis but here we shall take the help of three basic tests that is the chest x-ray, sputum smear microscopy and CB nut. We shall apply this test on a presumptive TB patient for the diagnosis of tuberculosis. So first of all, what is a presumptive TB patient? So when a patient is coming to you with signs and symptoms of tuberculosis, but you need to confirm them with a diagnosis, then that patient is called a presumptive TB patient. Now, when a presumptive TB patient is coming to you, what you will do? Go for a sputum smear microscopy and chest x-ray. Now, always remember for sputum smear microscopy, the result may be either positive, either negative. So if the sputum smear microscopy result is coming positive, you will call it a microbiologically diagnosed tuberculosis patient. Okay. Now, there might be two other scenarios where the sputum smear microscopy may be negative, but the chest x-ray might be positive. And in another scenario, both of them may be negative. So here, what we'll do here, if your clinical suspicion is very high, then you will go for CB nut. And now you'll have to remember if the patient is living with HIV, you will directly go for CBNUT for the diagnosis of tuberculosis. So now in the result of CBNUT, the MTB might be detected. So if it is detected, we shall go for rifampicin sensitivity. Now if the patient is sensitive for rifampicin, we shall also call it a microbiologically diagnosed tuberculosis patient. So now if the result shows intermediate sensitivity for rifampicin, you will repeat CBNUT. Okay. And now in this result, if it is also coming intermediate, we shall go for line probe assay or LPA or liquid culture. Now, if the patient is resistant for rifampicin, we shall consider other regimes that doesn't include rifampicin. Now in CBNUT, if MTB is not detected, then what we shall do? In this case, if your clinical suspicion is still very high, we shall refer the patient to a specialist or we shall consider some alternate diagnosis. So that was all for this video. I hope it was very easy to understand for you all. So thanks for watching, have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.